Hey, this is Jeff, and we are here with USP Pro. In this video, we look at custom fields and how to customize the name of a custom field with a prefix. So prefixed custom fields is what this video is about. So let's get started. Here we have USP Pro installed and activated. And now we can head over to the plugin settings. And they are located under the settings menu. And we go to advanced and scroll almost all the way down to custom field prefix. So if we click this link, we have a quick explanation of what this is all about. But rather than read, let's just watch and see. Here we can specify a unique prefix for our custom field names. So by default, the prefix is prefix underscore. Let's not change anything. Instead, let's just go put it into use. So let's create a new form here, and we will call it prefix custom field example. And we click publish. And now we can build our form, and we are going to keep it real simple. We'll just add a title and some content. So now we have a content field and a title field. And as explained in previous videos, we have some custom fields that are ready to go. We can add these to the form or we can ignore them and just let them sit here and do nothing. It is. It all depends if you need them or not. In this case, we do want to use one to demonstrate the custom field prefix. So we add a vertical bar. Again, vertical bar. And then we type in the name attribute. The pound sign is a separator. And now we type in prefix underscore because that is the prefix that is specified back in the settings. Remember when we scroll down under the advanced tab and we saw prefix there? Here we go, we're going to use it here. And now we can enter a name for our custom field and click update. And to include the custom field in the form, we copy its short code and paste it into place. Now we update the form and let's view the post on the front end and try to submit a quick test post. And we'll just call this custom field one submit post. And it looks like that went through just fine. So let's head over to posts. Here is our test post with the content and title. Here we go, prefix name. So here we have the prefix that is specified and then we were able to add whatever name we wanted here. So let's contrast this with what happens by default. We head back over here, go back into our form, and delete the name attribute, update, update the form, and let's refresh this. And let's, now that we have uh, in our custom field, we've removed the custom field prefix for the name attribute. Now let's try another test post. We'll call this test post two. And we'll call this uh, custom field one again. So we submit the post and everything looks good. So again, let's look at the first test post we submitted and we see the custom name for the custom field with the prefix. So we are able to enter this prefix and then we can type out whatever name we wanted when defining this custom field in the form. And now let's look at what happens normally. We see here is the default custom field. Here is the prefix and here is the name here. So what we did is we changed the prefix and specified our own name. So if we have multiple custom fields, it will go custom field one, custom field two, custom field three. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We go back to our form 
And let's just add a couple more custom fields here. Let's add number two. See, we have custom field number one right there. Here's number two. We just added that. Here's number three. Let's copy and paste. And so these three custom fields are going to use these definitions as explained in that previous video. So now we can refresh this. We see we have three custom fields. So let's call this test post three. And we'll call this custom field one, custom field two, and custom field three. Just like so, submit the post. And now we can head on over to posts and take a look. Here is our latest post. And here it is right here, our three custom fields, one, two, and three. Notice the default prefix and the name of the custom field right there. So these are the default values for custom fields. And they would keep going for as many custom fields as we had. One, two, three, four, and just keep going. So what we did is we said, wait, we want to use our own custom field. And that's what we did with this first post here. We specified prefix, and then we entered our own name. So to let this really sink in, let's uh, do this one more time. And this time we will use custom prefix for all three of these fields. So name prefix underscore. It has to be this because that is what we saw in the settings. And let's take a look at that. Under the advanced tab, we scroll down and we see that the custom field prefix is prefix. And this enables us to change the name of the uh, custom field. So let's go ahead and do that. Prefix. And then we can call it whatever we want. So we'll call this whatever one. And now let's copy, paste, and paste. Oops, and paste. And then we'll call this whatever two and whatever three. So this custom field now has a name of prefix underscore whatever dash one. And this one has prefix underscore whatever dash two and prefix underscore whatever dash three. So we want to make sure we update these, like so. Update the form. And now let's try one more test post to see it in action. We'll call this test post four. And we'll call this custom field one, custom field two, and custom field three. Submit. Success. Head over to posts. And here it is. Here's test post four. And here is custom field one, two, and three with the custom prefix and a custom name, just like we specified. And that's all there is to it. I uh, hope this video was useful for you. In the next video, we will look at custom, custom fields. And that basically takes us a step further than the prefix custom field. So it's a whole other level of customization for your custom fields. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.